up folks welcome to set apart homestead the prepared homestead uh, today I want to talk about something that I don't think it's talked about much at least in the preparedness community and it's probably because um, many times it might get looked at as like bordering on you know something that the left would support uh, or it's kind of their their thing to talk about environmental type of stuff um, and I want to talk about something that I've been reading a lot, doing some studying on, that's it's, it's got me very interested in. Um, and I think that it could impact us. I think it's something to, to you know, start being aware of, uh, much like the Grand Solar Minimum that I've talked about. And it is uh, what many scientists are now calling it, um, the sixth mass extinction. Um, and without going deep into the scientific uh, you know uh, part of it there have been mass extinctions of species on this planet ever so often okay and um, that seems to be pretty normal we're in one now and most of the science community agrees that we are in the midst of another mass extinction and they they believe that the the real difference is is that the rate of animals being you know, going extinct is a much much higher rate in fact I've seen numbers anywhere between 800 to 10,000 times faster than what we've ever seen before in history um, and I understand that there's a little bit of a political aspect to this when you start getting into well it could be environment well if it's environment is it man-made is it climate change is it all this and I'm, I'm not going into that um, you know, I don't I don't agree with the you know man-made climate change um, ideas, uh, with the exception that our government, other governments do uh, play with the you know environment. They 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 alter it. They have you know t the technological ability to um, uh, get involved in how our environment and how the weather patterns and things like that so we, we know that that's happening and that's not what I'm talking about but for today's video I'm not going to go into the political part of it you know I think most everyone know and watching this video in my channel get it that I'm, I'm a very you know conservative libertarian minded person I'm, you know the, the less government the better um, and so so in no way am I gonna support a socialist idea of anything but that's not what I'm talking about. Um, there is some hardcore data out there to, to, sh to support this. And I think that it's something that you and I, you know, it's something we need to be aware of. And when you take in consideration the political climate, the economic climate, and then this grand solar minimum that we're, you know, uh, beginning, um, I think, you know, the things that are happening to our environment, to our planet, uh, it's definitely something that we need to be aware of. And, and here's a few numbers to throw out at you. Since 1970, 60% um, of all the species of animals, or species of vertebrae, 60% uh, of all vertebrae species have disappeared from this planet since 1970. So we're talking, you know, about 50 years. 60% uh, of all vertebrae are gone. Since 1970, 50% of all the animal biomass, meaning that 50%, if you go back to 1970, and if you could count every animal that existed on the planet, only half of that number exists today. So 50% 50, 50 of all the animals that existed numbers-wise in 1970 exist today. It's much less. Um, and and the, these numbers are the same, you know, very similar with with birds, with insects, and the insect one is is a really big one. Uh, it's definitely something to take notice because with the vertebrae, a lot of the biomass, meaning the amount of animals, it's not that there's less biomass. It's that we've transferred that biomass from being wild animals to being domesticated animals. So in you know, the numbers of deer populations and buffalo and things like that have reduced, but the numbers of domesticated animals have increased. Um, but with insects, it's different. It's just going away. Uh, we all probably know 
are, are, are aware of the amount of bee populations that are being diminished. I mean, we're talking to the numbers of tens of millions, hundreds of millions of bees are just disappearing. They're gone. Um, and bees are, are extremely vital to our existence. And it's not just bees though. There are many other insects that are just as important to pollinating plants um, and, and just the whole life cycle of, of, of ecology here on the planet that insects are extremely critical to. And because of the amount of pesticides that's being uh, produced and sprayed on, you know, all over, um, the amount of pollution uh, that, that is being put out into the, uh, our planet these insects are dying at an astonishing rapid rate uh, and there are you know there are many scientists now that are saying that you know this is we're, we're getting to this critical area um, in fact I, I read that several in the scientific community have said that that they believe that even if today the whole planet just decided okay we're gonna switch this around and we're gonna start actually treating our planet as something that we care about that we're too far gone now, I don't know if that's necessarily true, and I'm not sure that I believe that, but all I'm saying is is that um, I think for you and I, there's, there's different aspects of this that we do need to be aware of. I think number one, and this is something that a lot of you may disagree with me on, I may get some backlash, and that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm prepared to stand my ground and my opinion on this. The whole thing of like protecting the environment, of being good stewards of the environment, of taking care of what you have, has been co-opted by the socialist radical left. And it's become, gotten to the place that, that um, people, folks like you and I, have almost you know, avoided anything that might have the, 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 the resemblance of, of environmental climate change because we don't want to look like we're supporting anything that has to do with that socialist radical left. And the truth is, is that, that it shouldn't be that way. You and I, <clears throat> whether you're living out off the land, uh, out in the country, uh, and, and believers in you know, the Father up above, that we should be taking care of this planet that we live on. Uh, we should be good stewards of it. And we haven't been as a species for the last couple of hundred years, really since the Industrial Revolution began, we have been just really destroying it. And I'm not talking about carbon emissions in the atmosphere and you know all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about look at what we're doing. You go out in the woods and you find trash everywhere. You see rivers on this planet that are just, you know, you could walk across the river because of the trash, the amount of plastics in the, in the ocean, all that kind of stuff. There is some legitimacy there. Um, and it's something that as preppers, um, when it starts getting to the point that we're saying, okay, we've polluted and we've sprayed us so many chemicals, we've killed so many animals, we've, we've, we've destroyed so much natural habitat that it's going to start affecting this planet, that it's gonna start affecting us. I mean, we should have noticed this before, but we definitely now need to stand up and take notice of it. Um, and it's something that that you know maybe you should at least in the back of your mind be thinking about and i understand this may not be a real popular subject it may you know you might be saying yeah but that's still that's so far down the line well it may not be um and number one we should be good stewards of of where we live and the planet that we have and, the, and what we have um that that has been given to us and i've always been a you know a strong supporter of that idea uh, you know, not littering on my property and, and, and taking care of, of the wildlife that lives on my property. But here's some things. There's a lot of us <clears throat> in the preparedness community that have this idea that, you know, when things get bad, we're just going to go out and we're going we're gonna to hunt. We're just going to hunt our food. And number one, there's going to be a lot of other people. And I've talked about that before. So you're going to be competing against thousands and thousands of other new hunters, hunters that's never hunted before, or just hunters that are very aggressive at hunting. You're going to be competing against a lot of people out there for those animals. But the fact is, is that there are less. Now, there are some, you know, certain states that have good conservation practices and they've built up the numbers of certain wildlife that, you know, like deer, um, but there are many other animals that are much, much le you know, lower population, less than they've ever been. And of course, there's just a lot more people on this planet than there ever has been before. Um, and so this idea that you're just gonna go out there 
and provide for your family and be all fat and happy because of all the wildlife that you're just gonna hunt or all the fish you're gonna fish out of the, the lakes and rivers, it's not gonna work that way if that's just your plan or if that's a big part of your plan. Um, Growing things could be, you know, strongly, uh, you know, affected because of plant life. Also, you know, because of the grand solar minimum, but the plants uh, could be greatly affected because of the decreased in insects. You know, if you don't have bees in your area, and there's certain areas it's worse than others, um, and other pollinators that because of, you know, maybe you live in an area where there's big farming and they're doing a lot of pesticide spraying and it's really knocking down the, the insect population. How is that gonna affect um, you really growing things naturally, things that aren't genetically modified, things that you don't have to put certain chemicals on them to get them to grow. Uh, you're just growing a garden the old fashioned way um, and, and there's not enough pollinators. It could definitely affect it. Um, so this idea of this, you know, possibly having this you know, new mass extinction uh, that we're into I do think it's something that we should take notice of um, because, you know, if you look at past mass extinctions, it's a lot of it, there's also a lot of things depending on how you believe, you know, spiritually and religiously. But for right now, we're just going to go by what the scientists say. In past mass extinctions, they believe these extinctions lasted over periods of, you know, hundreds of thousands of years. So whether, you know, you believe that those numbers or not, the point is, is they happened over a, a Good span of time whereas with this one what they're noticing is it's happening within just a few decades so what something in the past that happened maybe have taken hundreds of years to happen now it's happening within just a few years and and the the consensus seems to be that the whole extinction itself these animals you know species dying off is pretty natural but because of how man has you know, basically not taking care of the planet, it's causing those numbers to happen much, much more rapidly. Um, and I think it's going to start affecting us. Uh, when you start looking, and I've been preaching this message for weeks now, and I hope people are starting to kind of get it because I think it's important. And I am not a sky is falling, panic in the streets type of person. I'm trying to talk you, talk in, a, in very sensible ways. We, we need to start thinking about this. I don't want people to panic. I don't want people to, to, to lose sleep at night. I don't want people to, to think that they're just, you know, why, you know, why even try? We're all gonna die anyways. That's, that's not the point. Um, the point is, is, is being, you know, have some clear thinking on this, being able to have some knowledge. Having the knowledge is very important and that way it reduces the amount of fear. Okay, now you know what could lie ahead and you know how to prepare for it. And to me, that's what a responsible prepper, self-sufficient, you know, homesteader does, is they, they have a good knowledge of the things that's going on around them and that way they know how to kind of prepare for them. So I'm not trying to scare anyone. But when you start to look at all the things going on, like I mentioned just a little earlier, you know, the political climate, the economic climate, you know, all these kinds of things, the geopolitical climate, not just here in America, but on the whole planet. And then you add with that things like, you know, the grand solar minimum, um, the increased population, and, and this mass extinction that looks like that's, you know, happening around us, or just the fact that there's much less, you know, animal and plant life. You know, there's a lot of studies looking at the, the amount of plant life, you know, the amount of forest is greatly reduced from what they were 50 and 100 years ago. Um, so when you start looking at all this kind of stuff, when you put it together, you know, I'm a firm believer when I step back and I start looking at everything that it would not take much at all to cause that bubble to burst. Um, I think most of you would probably agree with this, that, that a lot of this around us, and I'm not talking the, the woods here, I'm not talking nature, I'm talking about the system around us, the system of business and commerce and, and this healthcare system and the government system and the financial system, all these systems, it's really a big illusion. There's a lot of illusion going on there and there's an, an illusion that it's all good. There's an illusion that our food supplies are good. There's an illusion that, that our healthcare system is all up to par. There's an illusion that, you know, that our, our electrical grid and our utility grids are strong and healthy and good. There's, this, there's an illusion to all of that. The, the reality is, is that most of it is extremely fragile and it would not take very much to cause it to just explode. 
And so when you look at all these things that's going on in our world and here in America, and then you look at the natural stuff of, you know, grand solar minimum, extinctions, pollution, uh, you know, these, these changes in our, in our environment and climate, and you put it all together, I don't believe it would take very much to cause this whole system of illusion to just explode and come crashing down. I mean, it would be like the straw that broke the camel's back. And I don't think it would be very much. I don't know what that would be. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that could hypothesize what that would be. You know, an impeachment could be that. You know, a stock market rapidly changing. There's all these kinds of things that could cause it to topple. Uh, the point is, though, I don't think it would take very much because there's so many things going on right now. And it, to my belief, there's probably more of these things happening all at once right now at this time than probably ever has happened before. And we as a people are weaker than we've ever been before. We're much less capable of being self-sufficient as a whole. We're much less capable. We're, we're much, much more dependent upon that system that is not as stable as we think it is. Whereas in the past, people were much more independent. So when you put all those things together, whatever could happen or whatever will happen, I believe it could be extremely catastrophic, much more so than we've ever seen before in human history. Um, and I'm not on here to try to scare everyone, but it's, it's just I think people need a little dose of reality and start to think about these things that um, that we all have to take, you know, preparedness and getting our, ourselves and our families in a place that they're more secure and more stable, probably more so than we ever have before. And sometimes that's rearranging our priorities, uh, doing that. And I do that with my own family. Um, you know, there's times, you know, we're like, okay, this is important. We like this, but you know what? This is way more important. And maybe we should be switching our spending or a time or whatever to this. And it's not always just food prepping and knowledge. A lot of it's, you know, your heart, uh, getting back into the word a whole lot more, you know, drawing closer to him. There's, you know, things like that, that spiritual aspect to it also that I believe, maybe not everyone, and that's fine. It may not be for you, but I believe it's for me and my family. Um, and, and doing that and, the, you know, the food preparation, the knowledge of preparation, training, all these types of things, you know, we're, the, the, the time that we have left uh, before we don't have the opportunity to do those things, uh, I think is less and less. I think it's, we're getting close to crunch time. And, um, you know, I, I want to see more people like me out there surviving and, 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 and doing good. Uh, you know, that's why I get on here and I talk. It's, you know, if I didn't care, I'd just take care of my own family and, and not worry about anyone else. But I get on here and I try to, try to hopefully educate or at least open your minds and, and, and get you thinking about these things and, and, and help you communicate with each other because it's important. I think community is important and, and, and helping as many people as possible to possibly be a little bit more prepared is also very important. So um, look, think about this, this, this extinction stuff that they're talking about. I, I think it is something that we need to be aware of and think about and kind of work that into our plan because you know, what if what you're planning on, you know, eating or growing or hunting or foraging or fishing or whatever just isn't there. It could affect it. It can affect your plan and your family's, you know, overall well-being. So anyways, thank you for watching. Um, you guys and gals are great. It, it means a lot to me that you comment and watch because it's, I have a good time doing this and, and you guys, um, you guys are, are really great people. So thank you for watching. And I'll catch you in the next video.